I knew I knew if I turned the camera on, you'd actually try it. So I have to go. I'm gonna have to go. You really gotta go through that webbing there. Mm, yeah, no, I'm not gonna really make it. I'm gonna have to go up through that webbing and this webbing on an angle, and so you can get past that two by six on the end. Got you turned up. Get past this. Okay, push it. Push it. Keep going. I just want to make sure that you guys all know we do have an attic access panel that's going to go right here. We're going to cover it for now, but we will open it back up later and this will be the access point to blow fiberglass insulation into the ceiling. I know a lot of people see the ceiling going up, they don't see any insulation and they're like, oh my god, you're not going to put insulation in there. I, I want to assure you there's going to be an R38 fiberglass blown in in the ceiling and we're gonna do a R21, about three inches of closed cell foam on the walls. So that's why we had to put this plywood up here so that the foam doesn't go up or the fiberglass doesn't go down. It gives it a nice stopping point. Uh, but we're ready to go ahead. We got all of our framing done and we're gonna put this side of ceiling up. Um, I suppose I need to get some cardboard myself. What are you doing? You can't make your own cardboard? You're welcome. I just wanted my boy to say thank you, man. <laughs> 20 foot plastic, man. It is a pain in the butt, but it's nice when you're done because it covers a ton of ground really quickly. Right here, using a piece of cardboard uh, as your washer makes the staples hold in a lot better and it doesn't tear as easily with the plastic. So if you're hanging plastic and it's always tearing on you, just take up some cardboard and throw some staples through it and you'll be golden. Are you ready, my son? Yeah, that's why people think you're my father. Stuff like that, like my son. Brother. Are you ready, my good friend, Gregory? <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about. I love it when it slips in. All right, so now that we have that ceiling done, I gotta frame the outside of the chimney. Now, a lot of questions over on Instagram about the chimney because it's just a wood frame. Well, you know, technology has brought us to a point where we can run a steel pipe that's double wall, fireproof rated, all that good stuff. I just gotta have the proper clearances. I just made myself a quick drawing and I'm gonna cut all the lumber to build a box up on the roof that's gonna look like the chimney. It's gonna have the double wall pipe through it. But the main thing is I wanna get that up so we can flash and properly install all of our roof steel so we can finish that detail. That's how I like to cut my lumber. I'll measure the first one, but sometimes, especially in this instance, I'm not trying to hit an exact dimension. Yes, I wanna be exact, but the important thing is that when my framing, I want all of my um, 
my members to be the exact same. So if this one was measured at 37 and a quarter and it ends up being 37 and 5 64ths or something, uh, that wouldn't make sense. Like 9 64ths, it's just off. At least all four of them are exactly off the same. So sometimes consistency is what matters. All right, I got all these pieces cut up to build my chimney box up on the roof. It's the end of the day though today. We're gonna go ahead and save this for first thing in the morning and maybe, and as you can hear, Greg is wrapping up doing some framing up in the ceiling uh, so that we can mount this you know, box up on the roof and have it secured to our roof right now. So he's probably sweating. Are you sweating up there, Greg? No, not at all. Good, that's, that's great, to, great to hear. He said he's not sweating at all. It's nice to just cut everything, get everything made up, and then we'll go ahead and build it. Should go together nice and easy. We'll see you guys tomorrow. I thought you said you weren't sweating. Honestly, Greg, I never, I never see you sweaty. I've never seen you that sweaty, ever. <laughs> you don't have much weight to lose, man. You need to be careful. All right, we got our box made here for the chimney, although I'm not gonna go ahead and secure the plywood yet because I wanna be able to manipulate the box to make sure it stays plumb, level, all that good stuff. And if I nail on the sheathing, it's gonna be rock solid. So now we can take this up and get it mounted. Telehandler? No, we got this. No, my foot's caught on my foot. There, just push it up. I'm trying. I'm maxed out. My calves won't go so high. Easy peasy, bro. Leverage. All right, so the good thing is in order to place this, we know what our chimney right below this uh, eave is. It sticks out 16 inches on a two-foot overhang. Look at, all the sp look at all the spiders, man. What spiders? You see them like floating through the air like they're... What are you, hallucinating? Okay, so we're just going to use this line as our reference. It's eight inches off of our edge, which is where we want it. Um, instead of trying to lay everything out, we're going to go ahead and get it mounted here and then we're going to square it up and position it plumb and level it just is what it is almost messed up my friend you almost messed up yeah i think we just push it back three quarters of an inch that way when we sheathe it i'm 280 center i want to see what this side is, I can't imagine it's gonna be exact. I mean, it'd be awesome, but yeah, I mean, that's where I would leave it for now. I can't believe that our building is still moving this much. So now that we have it mounted where we want it, that's good, cause that's plumb. Well, level. thank you. I haven't checked my left to right here, but come over here and check this. So what I'll do is I'll get my bottom nailed yeah. right where I want it. Now this is not going to be going anywhere. We'll use it to tweak the little box, plumb. So go ahead and I can, oh, whoa, whoa, bro, way too much. Hold that there. Let's just do that to hold it. You know what I need to do? No, I don't. Put my ear protection in. 
Yes, you should always put your ISO. I don't have my ISO tunes on me right now, so I'm going to use these cheap. Uh, I, don't even know <sighs> I don't even know why I got you those ISO tunes. I bet you one of you guys would have probably wore those ISO tunes every day to be safe if you got them. Do you feel bad? Huh? Exactly. I don't hear you. Got my hearing Check it the other way. Push it where you where you want it. Pull them. No, no, the. Yeah, no. No, no. Get your level. Put the level on. Plumb it up, and go where you want it. About there. Okay, good. Didn't mess anything up. Oh, this looks pretty good. Okay. How'd it do for you? Any of that tweaking? Dude, it's like... What's that guy say? hairs. So that guy's got to get tweaked. Let's see what we're doing for square, if we've gotten anything out of it. 65 three eighths. And I'm 65 and a quarter. So it's already way closer. We need to stretch this one out, which... What does that say it needs to do? What is your... Well, and what's your side do? Yep, perfect. It's going to go back, which will make it longer and give us a better uh, yeah. better opportunity to be square. So use your sheathing when you want to square something up. If you nail it on your constant point, which in this case was the roof deck, because that's not moving, uh, we can tweak the box and make sure it's perfectly plumb. All right, same thing, Greg. Get your, get your uh, box plumb. Right there. That's where you like it. Mm -hmm. Why am I? Oh, this, this gun does not. The one problem that I have found with the Milwaukee, two inch nail strips, when it gets down to the last strip, for some reason, does not like them, Greg. We just gotta readjust Good? It. No, it, it bunches them up. Go ahead. Yeah, see? You gotta be careful. Go ahead. I found that it's just easier though if I just put one in at a time when I'm using two inchers. I think there's too much slop in this and what happens is they like double up on yeah, each other. Yeah, double up on it. Yeah, and that ain't good. Can I, can I tell people of YouTube that I use math to make this all perfect? Or do I stress that too much? I think, you should, I think you should stress that too much. Okay. I think people are tired of hearing about your math problems. It's not a problem, Greg. It's a solution. That's where you're wrong, right? There, dude. That's golden. I guess just for, just for the sake of checking, I was 65 and 5 16 on that one. And this one, 65. Oh, dude. Hmm. I'm like 11 30 seconds. That's gross. I'm just a hair over 5 16. So, what we did was, uh, if you remember the other day or a little bit ago in the video, Greg did the additional framing up here in the roof. And that was so that we had good solid framing underneath of this ledger so we could fasten it. And then also, we'll fasten it up here at our peak purlin, but the pipe will come out right about here and uh, it'll just come up and this will all get capped. There'll be Versetta stone siding. It'll be a little bit interesting. We've got these details to work around, but that's what we're gonna work on next once this is done, is getting these sheets of steel ran around here. All right, so this piece right here is what's gonna get cut around the chimney. You always have to make sure in your layout that your ribs are at least more than an inch away, uh, preferably not as big of a deal there, but as you come to this side, you can't have a rib too close to your uh, where your bend up is. Lucky for us, our rib is gonna die right in the corner, which should work out just fine. I think if I swung hard enough, I could be hedge with this. Mm. I don't think so. I mean, I like to Probably think. Sever your spine for sure. No. Yeah. 
I think something like that. If you swung hard enough, it'd sever, so much, sever someone's spine. You guys hear that background noise? Another scissor lift. It's not us, obviously, because we're right here. So uh, Zach's back. <laughs> <laughs> Electrician is going to town on getting uh, getting the wiring in the ceiling ran. The right tool for the job, Greg. I know you're a believer of a man can have too many tools, but I say right. There's a difference between too many tools and having the right tool. Yeah, but they don't. They're not synonymous. Like you can't have. Too many tools. Oh, I'm pretty sure you can have too many tools. Are you done talking? Because I wasn't paying attention. I mean, if you were saying something important. You're bad, aren't you? No. Let's go. Get it up there. Okay. Boom. Look at that, son. Pick it up a little. Ready? Pull it up. One, two, three. Nice. You know, someone asked how this panel performs in like windy conditions. I mean, it's exceptional because there's nothing underneath of it. You can't, you know, yeah, there's no, there's no uplift. I mean, the whole building uh, roof system has to move. Right, it does. The whole, the whole roof system building does move. All right, so now that we have these roof panels here, ideally you do want to have this last piece. I'm actually short this piece because there was a miscalculation when uh, this you know, when this roof was taken off and I missed it, it was figured with a one foot overhang and we have a two foot overhang. So it is what it is. I'll have to get another piece for each side, but I can go ahead and finish this. So I want to do that because I want to get this ridge cap on. What I have to do is first put on my pitch brake. The pitch brake is the flashing that goes over the panel and up the end wall here on this chimney. It won't have any fasteners on the top. It'll be fastened up here on the side wall. So I'll take you through that process. First thing I gotta do is uh, grab a dimension from this flashing over here to the edge of the box over here. And I am just at 40, I'm just at 46 inches. So now what I'll do is I'll cut my pitch break that's gonna go up the roof and up the wall here. This piece of flashing here, I wanna make sure I leave a one inch bend on both sides. So we're gonna go 46 plus two inches, which is 48. And what I like to do is I don't like to make both sides, uh, both measurements right away. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and cut this. Okay, so this is what is going to eventually go just like this. I'm gonna go ahead and mark right there on the face of where this is. Now I'll put my harness on, I'll go check that and make sure I like where it's at. So I'm just taking the mark from the plane of the side of the box putting it on this trim so I can do the same bend up the one inch bend up that I did on the other side. Okay, I'm good here, I'm good here. So making sure that this is pressed up nice and tight, I'm gonna mark these locations. I'm gonna mark the edge. Now I don't need this piece so now what I need to do is cut some closures, uh, Z closures that are gonna go in between the pan here and they're going to be what I secure that pitch break to. So all I need is the dimension from rib space to rib space. All right, now this is the uncomfortable part. There's no good way of doing it, but it's gotta be done. So um, being up here on the roof like this is never the easiest. What I like to do is take a piece of trim, okay? And you're gonna put it, remember those marks we made? I'm gonna put it just off of those marks. And then I'm gonna just put a line on the back side. Now this one over here is gonna be special. Now we're taking this mastic and we're going just off of this line. You're gonna push it in, and go up over your rib, get it in there nice.
gonna leave that there for right now. Now this is where it's a little tricky because I don't have this piece of steel over this rib yet locked down. Um, I should be able to lock it down and slide it up as I go after the fact. Worst case, I might have to unscrew this trim a little bit. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo this and take our Z closure. And because I don't have that other side done yet, I'm gonna make sure I push it over here as tight as possible. Line it up with that back line that we scribed. We're gonna go right through that mastic. Well, I guess I gotta apologize, guys. I thought my camera was recording. I'm not taking it off. I'll show you on the other side. But this is what the finished product looks like. And I was, I was actually coming over to show how this finished off. So this here is hemmed and locked onto that Z-Flash. It got locked on, pulled up, okay? So that's what is locking it down, keeping it fastener free, no exposed fasteners. It's all underneath there on that butyl. We've got the fasteners up here that are gonna get covered with our house wrap and then our stone and all that good stuff. You can see this flashing detail here. This is overlapped this guy and actually there'll be another piece of trim that's gonna counter flash over this and lap as well. But that's looking pretty good. Everything here is looking pretty good. I'll have to show you guys again this process, how this piece worked um, over on the other side. 